Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add the next level of immersion to your sim rig with a budget base shaker setup. So now that I have my DIY wooden rig built, the next part of the project was to add this base shaker system that I'll be going over today. For around 50 euros and maybe an hour of tinkering, this has got to be the best value addition to your rig, I think, to enhance your immersion whilst racing. Honestly, I had no idea it could be this engaging, and I think everyone should have one. For me, racing without base shakers now feels so dead and lifeless, almost as if someone's just turned the feedback off on my wheel. So this is it, a 100 watt stereo amplifier and two 100 watt shakers, each one costing about 15 euros. The amp needs to be assembled as it arrives in kit form and it features a mainboard, back plate, top plate. Uh, the kit also includes a power button, some screws, some spacers and also a DC connector to fit your power supply of choice plus a big knob. And all you need to assemble it is a small cross-headed screwdriver. Start by assembling the back plate onto the main amplifier board. Now once that's on, you can put a screw in each corner, twist on the spacers, fit on and screw the top plate. And once the main unit's assembled, you can then push on the power button and the volume knobs. All the connections on the amplifier unit are clearly marked for things like your inputs and the stereo speaker out. And to connect it to your PC, you can either use the standard 3.5mm stereo jack, or a USB cable, or even a Bluetooth device if you want to go wireless. And this makes it a really flexible little amplifier, where you can choose your connections based on what you have available on your PC. Now moving on to the shakers themselves, these are two small subwoofers which have been designed with a very heavy pole piece which is what transfers the vibrations through the chassis and onto your rig. And to assemble these you'll of course need some speaker wire, some washers and bolts and some nuts. Now the nuts are really important as we need to also use these for standoffs to make sure that the pole piece has a certain amount of clearance to the rig as there is some travel just outside of the speaker chassis. Once the initial assembly was out of the way, I tested the system by connecting the shakers up to the amp and then to my phone via a 3.5mm jack and just play some music just to make sure that everything's working and is operating as intended. Now as this is a two channel setup, I mounted one of the shakers under my pedals at the front of the rig and the other one directly under my seat to maximise the feedback from the system. You should definitely experiment with placement here as it can affect how much the forces are being dissipated by your rig and you could be losing a lot of power otherwise. So onto the settings. I'll be uploading a more detailed video going over the shaker settings later, but for now here's a quick overview of the main feedback settings that I use for ACC, my main sim. Probably the most important thing to remember when setting up the feedback is that you want distinct frequencies and behaviours for each of the outputs from the game's telemetry. It's quite easy to overdo everything and you end up with some kind of unintelligible and uninformative mush which doesn't really help us when we're on track. So you can see here that I only have on all the essential info that I want whilst driving. The TC and the ABS judder and wheel slip most notably, but also we have the gear shift thumps, the engine revs ticking away in the background, and a balanced suspension telemetry for the kerbs and the grass and the other surface bumps that you would feel in the car. As this system is a dual channel, I can easily separate what the front of the car is doing from the rear now, so the feedback from the wheels genuinely helps me understand the connection to the road. Every sim racer should have some in my opinion, especially if you race in VR, it is a phenomenally immersive experience. And I'll go over the settings in detail in my next video which will cover the setting up of the SimHub software and how I adjusted it to make sure I got the most immersive and informative experience possible. So hopefully this video highlights just how simple and easy it is to add a base shaker system to your rig. I know I was apprehensive at first due to the cost of commercially available base shaker systems, but for the price of this, I really think this is something that everyone should be doing. And it's so easy that even people that can't tell the difference between right and left-handed screwdrivers should have no problems with this project. So if you like this vid, please don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date as it really helps the channel grow. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.